Hello. I'm Myra Jacobs, founding director of the National Bone Marrow Transplant Link. Thank you for viewing our webcasts on meeting the challenges of chronic graft-versus-host disease in children and adolescents. We are very appreciative of the National Marrow Donor Program for its support of this project. You are now watching Part 1, The Medical Aspects and Management of Chronic Graft-Versus-Host Disease in Children and Adolescents. We have created these webcasts for parents of children currently dealing with chronic graft-versus-host disease, as well as for parents of children considering transplant and wanting to know more about chronic graft-versus-host disease. We wish to thank Dr. Kristen Baird and Kim Thorman for their participation. Dr. Baird will be presenting graft-versus-host disease in children and adolescents, friend and foe. Ms. Thorman will follow with a presentation on identifying and managing chronic graft-versus-host disease in children and adolescents. Please be sure to fill out the survey at the end of the webcast. We appreciate your feedback and ideas. They will help us in the development of future programs. Thanks, Myra. Hello, I'm Kristen Baird, and I'm a pediatric oncologist from the Pediatric Oncology Branch of the National Cancer Institute at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. I specialize in the treatment of children with cancer using stem cell transplantation, and my research concentrates on the evaluation and treatment of post-transplant complications, particularly GVHD. I currently serve as the pediatric chairperson of the chronic GVHD team at the NIH. In this presentation, I will be speaking about chronic graft-versus-host disease, which is a long-term complication that sometimes follows a blood or bone marrow transplant. Specifically, I'll be discussing chronic graft-versus-host disease in children. The goals of this presentation are to provide an overview of stem cell transplants and factors that may impact the development of chronic graft-versus-host disease. Second, to discuss the prevention and development of chronic graft-versus-host disease in addition to the risks and potential benefits of chronic graft-versus-host disease. The objectives of this presentation are to understand how the choice of donor, stem cell source, and conditioning affect the chances of developing chronic graft-versus-host disease. To understand the difference between acute and chronic graft-versus-host disease and to recognize their symptoms. Third, to know about the potential benefits of mild graft-versus-host disease in treating certain diseases. And finally, to be aware of how treatment for chronic graft-versus-host disease may affect your child. In this talk, I will use the term stem cells to refer to the cells used in transplant, whether they came from bone marrow, peripheral blood, or cord blood. I will also use the terms graft-versus-host disease, or GVHD, interchangeably. When considering stem cell transplantation, you can think of it in terms of putting together the pieces of a puzzle. Many factors must go into the decision of pursuing a transplant, such as the disease being treated, the health of the patient, and the availability of a suitable stem cell donor. Depending on these factors and many additional considerations, the manner in which the transplant will be performed is determined. Many of these factors play a role in the likelihood of whether a patient develops graft-versus-host disease. First, I will discuss a couple of factors that can impact the development of chronic graft-versus-host disease post-transplant, such as the choice of the donor, the stem cell source, and the conditioning regimen. Next, I will define the types of graft-versus-host disease and how they might affect your child. I will then talk about the prevention and treatment of GVHD. And finally, I will conclude with some thoughts about what the future may hold for GVHD. There are increasing indications for stem cell transplantation as a treatment option, particularly in children. There are approximately 7,500 allogeneic stem cell transplants performed in North America each year. Approximately half of those are in children less than 20 years of age. There are several inherited or genetic diseases and acquired disorders that can be treated by stem cell transplant. They include conditions that cause bone marrow dysfunction or failure. 
such as immune deficiency, where the white cells do not function normally, hematologic diseases, such as thalassemia or sickle cell disease, where the red blood cells are not formed normally, or other diseases, such as bone marrow failure or metabolic diseases. However, the most common indication for stem cell transplant in children is cancer. For patients who receive a stem cell transplant for a reason other than cancer, every attempt is made to avoid the development of graft versus host disease as there is no benefit to the patient in having GVHD. However, for patients with certain types of cancer, such as leukemia, a little bit of GVHD may actually benefit the patient. We will discuss this more in detail later. The different types of donors for transplantation are listed here. Autologous stem cells, when a patient's own cells are used, or syngenetic transplant, which are cells from an identical twin donor, do not cause GVHD. As you can see from the chart on the right, an identical twin would have a close to 0% chance of developing graft-versus-host disease. An allogeneic transplant, when the cells come from someone else, have a have differing risks of developing GVHD. The more highly matched stem cells from a related donor will have a lower risk than a donor with a mismatch or a donor that is unrelated. The chart to the right shows that a related HLA identical match, say from a sibling, has the lowest risk of developing graft-versus-host disease. This risk increases even with a match-related donor that is not a sibling. This is represented by the middle bar on the graph. An unrelated donor, abbreviated URD on the graph, that is fully matched will have a higher risk than a related donor, similar to that of a related donor with a single antigen mismatch. This is indicated by the identifier 1AGMM. And to the far right on the graph, you will see a donor with a two antigen mismatch will have an even higher risk of developing GVHD. Stem cell source, or graft, can consist of cells from the donor's bone marrow, peripheral blood stem cells, or blood from a cord blood unit. Bone marrow is still the most commonly used stem cell source for pediatric patients. Among patients younger than 20 years of age, 50% of allogeneic stem cell transplants are from unrelated donors. 40% of the unrelated donor transplants in these patients use cord blood grafts. Cord blood is much more frequently used in children than in adults because of the limited number of donor cells contained in the graph. As children are smaller than adults, they don't need as many cells. Peripheral blood stem cells have the highest rates of graft-versus-host disease, and cord blood have the lowest. However, peripheral blood stem cells engraft better than cord blood. Those factors, along with the best match, all need to be considered when deciding what type of donor graft should be used. 